The Confederate States of America seceded from the United States of America and started the Civil War over their state's rights in determining how their citizens might own and use slaves for their own gain. Therefore, their secession and the Civil War was over slavery and state's rights as those rights pertained to slavery. Their own words insist on this, and we shall read a few of those, as four of those states gave documents stating their reasons for secession. First with Georgia's. It reads, For the last ten years, we have had numerous and serious causes of complaint against our non-slaveholding Confederate states with reference to the subject of African slavery. Now, yes, they refer to the entirety of the United States as Confederate States, as they viewed their union with the rest of the states as a confederation, as they were all view themselves as independent nations that were part of one nation, not as one nation that was a bunch of those states. So, and also, they refer to themselves as slave states in these documents often, and refer to those against them as non-slaveholding states. Even though two slaveholding states did not fully or at all secede, those being Delaware and Maryland. Now going to more of what the document reads, it says, Deprive us of an equal enjoyment of the common territories of the Republic. This referring to the fact that they could not use their slaves in those non slaveholding states, and therefore their economic ability was restricted there as the slavery was the prime factor of their economy. They used them to gather their resources, maintain their resources, process their resources, and to produce. It was the core of their economy. With the removal of slavery, it destroyed their economy, and destroying their economy uprooted their entire society. Going to more of what they said, they say, The material prosperity of the North was generally dependent on the federal government. That of the South, not at all. They were referring to that they saw themselves as separate culturally, and that they were not fully connected, and therefore were their own, and should have their own right of what they do, because this is their culture and how they do it. Other things they said, We had shed our blood and paid our money for its acquisition. This was referring to the Mexican-American War and the territories gained from that, and how the federal government had limited the ability of using slaves in those areas. Other things they said is, yet for above 20 years, the non-slaveholding states generally and wholly refused to deliver up to us persons charged with crimes affecting slave property. That is part of what they referred to earlier as depriving their equal enjoyment of the common territories of the Republic, as often the non-slaveholding states would not return runaway slaves or those would help the slaves run away, therefore weakening the economic structure of the South. Now going to Mississippi's statement, it says, Our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery. The greatest material interest of the world, its labor supplies the product which constitutes by far the largest and most important portions of commerce of the earth. Therefore, they refer to how big of a part slavery was in the agriculture of the world at the time. And they refer to it as the economic part of the world. They viewed it as all trade and economics. It was over slavery but now of racism. Racism is a justification for slavery at times, as not all slavery is based on race, but all slavery is rooted in economics. It's economic system. And to justify the slavery that was practiced in the US of pure African slavery, to justify that they used racism. As they later stated, after that statement where they say, None but the black race can bear exposure to the tropical sun. They were referring to, Oh, we need them to work here, as no one else can do it, therefore we should put them just doing that. They used it as a justification, not as the reason for it. Other statements from Mississippi's statement is, It has nullified the fugitive slave law in almost every free state in the Union, and has utterly broken the compact with 
our fathers pledged their faith to maintain. There they refer to, once again, how runaway slaves instantly freed when they got to the northern states. Even though technically they were supposed to be returned, often they weren't due to the views in those states, and therefore going against the law that was already established as it was opposed in those states. Other things they said, it has given indubitable evidence of its design to ruin our agriculture, to prostrate our industry, industrial respects, and to destroy our social system. There they state, they are worried about their entire agricultural system, their economy, their industry, and their social structure of collapsing if slavery is weakened at that anymore or goes away, as they view it possibly coming as now they had Lincoln in the office, who was a Republican and against slavery. Therefore, they viewed their system as at its end, that it was going to collapse, and they were trying to hold on to it as long as they could. Now going to South Carolina, they said, as pertaining to the creation of the United States, free and independent states, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commons, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. There they state that they view each one of them as their own nation and can do their own things. Therefore, they view the federal government's actions as unjust against them and not having power over them. As stated previously, they view them all as part of a confederation, not as one nation. Now more, they say, but an increasing hostility on the part of the non-slaveholding states to in the institution of slavery has led to a disregard of their obligations. But the current of anti-slavery filling has led her more recently to enact laws which render inoperative the remedies provided by her own law and by the laws of the Constitution. There they refer to, once again, the ignoring of the fugitive slave law and how that is affecting the economy of the South. And other parts of these documents even refer to as these actions as leading to uprisings in the South and causing troubles, and they view their system as collapsing. And once again, they give an example. In the state of New York, even the right of transit for a slave has been denied by her tribunals. There they state how they can't bring their slaves up to the north. So when they bring their goods to the north to be processed as to turn their cotton, biggest asset they had, into textiles and other materials, they need to take it to the industrial north and they couldn't do it themselves with their slaves. Therefore, they were limited to the use of the North and required the North for their support now, therefore restricting them, therefore restricting their economic gain and allowing the North to do as they willed with them, which they did not like as it limited their economic power. Therefore, the Civil War was followed for economics. The South feared the economic structure collapsing and the economic power falling that if they lost slavery, or if slavery was limited even more, they would lose the economic power, they would lose their personal power, lose their social standing, lose their entire social structure, and the society would collapse, as the society they had set up would not work without slavery. And therefore, they started it to hold on to their system, hold on to their structure, and that was rooted in slavery. And they wanted to hold on to that through their state right of being able to choose who could own slaves and where they could own them and what they could do with them. So that is the reason for the Civil War. It is both slavery and states' rights, but both in the ways it pertains to economics and states' rights as it pertains to slavery. Those are the reasons for the Civil War. And there are many others besides that, but those are the key. The sources are down below. You may go and read them at your own will. And beware of wandering into the trap which is the comment section. Like and subscribe.